Hey friends, welcome back to the library. I have with me today author Cedar Rose, and I'm super excited to be chatting to you. Thank you for joining me. Thank you. Sorry, my so, cat wants to be a part of it too. <laughs> all, all are welcome. Um, tell me a little bit about how you got started writing and kind of your journey there. Oh, for writing, um, I actually published my first book back in 2017. Um, I have now since re-released it because it wasn't very good. It's still not very good. But I started writing um, as an outlet for PTSD because I'm a military veteran. Um, so it kind of gave me a way to talk about things without talking about things. So that's how it how I got started yeah so how long do you say do you think you've been writing you said it started um, I would say well since 2017 when I got out of I got out of the military at 2013 and then just wasn't having a great time and was struggling and somebody suggested um like journaling, which then turned into other stories, um, mm -hmm. which then led to fighting for her love getting released in twenty thirteen or twenty seventeen. So, um, but that was only my first book. Um, I then I didn't really really start writing until um, twenty nineteen when um, Ever's Last was. Um, released. Okay. So you said you started really for some coping for your PTSD. Do you um, think that that has a lot of influence over your um, character inspirations and your plot lines as far as like how the story unfolds? Um, I put a little bit of uh, myself into every book in some shape or form. Um, and so I won't say it like um, totally decides like who my characters are. I'm um, into MMA fighting. I love hockey. Um, I'm even friends with a few MMA fighters um, and I've met many more. So like my um, chicken fried love series or rural bachelor series is based off of a dating show. So I make fun of the bachelor and bachelorette, but most of the guys are either cowboys because I did grow up in Wyoming or they're MMA fighters. Um, but like my latest release um, is about the military. So, I mean, I can't really say like exactly what my characters are based off of. It's more so I just at, I, um, I just put in, I don't know. I don't, I start typing and then they tell me. Well, yeah, that's pretty accurate. I find that a lot of authors are like, well, we just kind of start the story and they run off how that went, how they want to. <laughs> I like the latest story, Dear John. Um, it's it has a lot to do with like, um, I won't say it's based off my life because I'm not in a relationship, but I have dealt with with family members that have it is trigger warning has cancer has death um it's about deployment and things that happen on deployments in the military um it's not an easy book and it was an easy book to write but i mean i think for a very very short little novella it's um very beautiful but that is really based on like my time in the military but those are the only characters that really were um, based off of other people that I know. Okay. Um, do you read while you write? Is that like a part of it or is that something like you do separately? I, lo I know a lot of authors have said like, I won't read while I'm currently working on a book because they find that their writing ends up sounding like the person who they're reading. I am an avid collector of books, and I if all my books were unpacked, I would show you. My, um, I could start a library, legit start a library by myself right now. Um, 
because I, I just ended up buying a house and moving in, so I'm still unpacking. But um, I I love to read no matter what. If I were to stop writing tomorrow, I would still read because I just, I love it. I love getting lost in stories. I I mean, everybody has their favorite authors. Um, there's some that I would read over and over again. Um, so um, when I'm writing, I, I still read just because like, I'm not writing 24 hours a day. I still have a, a day job that I go to. Actually, mine's a night job, but so I'll read on, on break. I'll read, you know, um, when I get home or whatever, I, I at least read for an hour or two a day. Cause I just, I like that most of sometimes my, um, yeah, I just, I love to read. I don't think I sound like any other author because really I am probably my own worst enemy and I think I sound, my books are crap, but, um, so I don't, yeah. I don't think I sound like the other person. So do you have a comfort genre to read versus comfort genre to write? Like, are they the same or do you have two separate things when it comes to reading and writing? I don't really, I I'll read anything. I don't have like a strict go-to genre. Um, I mean, I do like dark romances. Um, but I will read anything, um, just as much as I will write anything. Cause, uh, chicken fried love like i said like it can be a little bit humorous at times uh, some of it is there's a dark past with someone in the the story but a lot of the times the guys in the book um are lighthearted and fun um but then i have also written books where um in brutal love he's literally in a cage match and literally tears the guy's head off his shoulders so i mean it could go either way um but then i've written i have a i have a young adult novel a little novella about fairy tales are real they live on your street and they have to go save their dumb parents so i don't have like a go-to of genre it's just like something i have in my mind i'm just gonna write it and i don't care like so i like i said i have books all over the place yeah, and we keep them all under my mind same, is. Yeah, they all stay under your same name as well. Like, you don't have multiple pen names for each genre. Oh, no. I can't keep up with my, even my own pen name. I don't, in my own name, I don't think I could do. I have, I have written other books under other pen names, but then I've always just gone straight back to this one. Um I have like two books, two or three books. I don't know. It could be more under uh, one pen name. And then I wrote this um, story called The Gods under another. And I'm going to re-release it under Cedar because, um, again, I think and every author will say it like each year you get better, you grow, your books get better, the writing gets better. You like you learn little things every year. Um, so when I wrote The Gods, which is a reverse harem kind of mafia-ish, bully-ish, um, I was very in inexperienced. So it's getting re-edited for real. Um, but no, yeah. So do you use um, do you use like an actual editor? Or do you use like alpha and beta readers to kind of fall through your stories? Well, nobody reads my stories, so I don't have any alpha beta readers, but I do have um, editors. Um, it's not the same one, but it's I use the same ones. I just whoever's available at the time to edit. Um, I as well as I have, you know, like I get my cover covers done by someone, some of my covers done by someone. Um, it It costs a lot of money. And so, like, that's why um, it takes, yeah, it takes a lot of money to, to write a book. Not everybody understands that. You can just write it and put it out there. Um, even just to make a cover through Canva sometimes will cost you money. Um, and it's good to self-edit before you turn over to an editor, which doesn't cost you anything, but an editor or even something like Dragon or whatever, um 
Uh, but yes, I, because I don't want to stop it. Um, I don't want to, uh, I want my books to be all right, I guess. Um, I, I do use professional people. Yeah. And there's, there's, there's nothing wrong with that. I just find that everybody has their own different way of doing things. And so I get curious on how that works. I wouldn't say nobody reads your stories though. I feel like you have a decent following. Cedar Rose does not have a decent following. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure people have read my books. I mean, I know my pa- my family, my, my, my dad and my sister read my books. I have, told them no you may not read the next book in the series or something but um but they read my books um i mean i do i guess there's people out there that like them because you know i yeah get you know see it come up on kdp or i get see a review or something like that but i don't know like i said i am my own worst enemy so yeah and my own worst critic so I feel like that's that's both probably a good thing and a bad thing um, because I feel like, you know, when we're our own worst critic, we end up being maybe a little too much, too hard on ourselves, um, you know, too critical. But then at the same time, we like it's, it's that drive to always be better and always do more. And then the downside of that is you're not always happy with what you've come up with. That is true. That is true. Um, I'm working on a Why Choose Halloween anthology piece. Um, the pre-orders are out there. They're like um, Ames, Ames Mills um, is like the, um, and her PA are kind of running it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think I've rewritten my story. I don't. It, I mean, it has to be at least 10,000 words. It's probably going to be a little bit more, which I will be happy with. But I've rewritten a story and I need to probably get it to editing like this month um, at least five times. Like I've started writing it and then changed the story, started writing it and changed the story. But um, sometimes, you know, that happens. Um, but that's where being my own worst critic comes into play, um, which does hinder. And, but, you know, you only want the best for yourself and if you, and for your readers. Yeah. So as far as being like your own worst critic and approaching different genres or like sub genres, when it comes to writing, um, how do you approach those? Like, you know, writing maybe a contemporary romance for a small town versus writing like a Halloween short or a reverse harem. They're not the same. I mean, they can start out somewhat similar, but when you go through them, obviously we know your characters take off and kind of run how they want, but is there a certain mindset that you have to get yourself into when it comes to like actually starting the story? Uh, No, you kind of said it. It kind of takes off from there. Um, I have three books. Um, so f- when I I re-released Fighting for Her Love and then um, part of this uh, Global Outlaws um, syndicate world, shared world. Um, and then I ended up, because you had to pick like a state or a country and I picked Florida because my book had already taken place in Florida. And then I picked another state. Um, and it Twisted Trials and Psychos are kind of like run-ons. Like Twisted Trials is like the second part of Fighting for Her Love. Um, which uh, like in the beginning wasn't going to be um, reverse harem. And then it ended up being a reverse harem like halfway through the book. And I'm like, well, I'm dumb. Um, I don't, I don't like really start out in that mindset. Um, except for this like little Halloween anthology, like I, I automatically knew it had to be why choose. So I don't think like, I think a lot of times, like, I just start writing and then I'm like, oh, well, let's throw this guy in there. I don't know. It just happens. Um, I'm part doing, um, you know, and the only other time I've been in the, and I, or will be in the mindset, because a lot of times my books don't turn out that way, um, is I'm doing, um, like, a Lovecraft, um, H.P. Lovecraft retelling, um, 
And the monster I picked are these kind of amphibian frogmen in the sea. I forget the deep ones. Um, so I'm like, well, I could do a reverse harem with that one. It doesn't have to be, but um, which also that is out of any genre I've ever done. I've never done anything like, you know, HP Lovecraft monster uh, alien stuff. Um, so other than that, I don't, I just start writing and then every, I just let it find, I don't know. It just goes. That's how it goes sometimes, I guess. Um, let's see. I had another question and now I have, oh, here we are. Um, how many different stories do you work on at once? Like, do you find that you can do multiple or do you have to like sit down and really focus on one at a time? Um, I try not to burn myself out. Um, I, for a while there, I felt like I just needed to be releasing books to be releasing books. And so it was like I was working on like three or four at the same time. And now I kind of focus on on one or two at the same time, just because, again, um, I don't want to get the stories mixed up. And it's I don't know, it can, can get stressful, especially if you're on a deadline. But I also don't have, um, I used to be part of a publishing company. Um, that's another story for another day and can't really talk about it. But anyways, I don't have deadlines anymore. So um, so I unless I'm like joining like an anthology group. So I try to, I just try to focus on one or two at the same time. Okay. Um, I just had another question. And now it's gone. <laughs> We've ran through. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Back to what I was going to ask. I'm listening. <laughs> Try this again. Um, so you said you don't use alphas and betas for like editing and stuff, but do you still use like an art team or is it just like a once you're done writing full send? Um, if I if if I could find like a, a, a alpha beta team, I would certainly use them. Um. But uh, most I, most of the time, I like self edit as I go, and then um, I'll send it off to my editor and let them do their thing, and then we go from there, kind of thing. Um, the art team, I don't have like an art team. Um, I kind of just tell the person doing the covers or whatever what I what the book is about. If I'm doing a um, like a model on the front, I tell her what the main characters look like, and then she likes them. Be like, "Do you like this? Do you like this? Do you like this?" Until we just find the one. So, how um, I've talked to a couple different authors about this, but whenever you're getting ready to launch it for like KDP or something, how do you determine which of the subgenres you're going to be labeling it as? Because they have so many different options. And like, for example, if you were to choose just dark romance, that's a really broad category. Um, and we can't guarantee that Amazon's going to even push your book if it starts getting, you know, a couple thousand reads. But if you were to do something like, you know, dark, fey, fantasy or something like that, you'd have a better chance of getting that Amazon boost themselves because they send out emails and push books and stuff. Um, I try to go through the categories like it gives us categories and it's like romance and then it says pick one like polyamorous or new new um like college life or alpha male um i try to pick the one that sounds best and then like it says keywords like for searching and then you type in what kind of like words like like for mom i put like moffy ish um and then um 
I put in, you know, like age gap or something like that. It just it depends because um, I'm horrible at picking my categories. I really I probably don't pick the right ones. Um, but I try to like in the keywords for like searching, like try to put the main plot points of the book. So then that kind of helps people bring come like find it or whatever. Yeah. Do you feel like um, any one specific social media helps you or hinders you in any way? I think all social media hinders even the the biggest author. But at the same time, social media also helps. Um, I post a lot, not just my own books, but I post a lot on TikTok. um, And then I post in Facebook. And then especially like um, if I go to on my author kdp and i see which books are doing all right um i usually will take and like hit those books and push like mainly social like uh, facebook and instagram up i'll you know share the covers and share the blurbs and things like that um just because like if those are the ones doing good for the month then those are the ones i'm going to promote the most yeah so um, what do you think is the Bennis benefit versus downfall of doing like in indie publishing versus uh, traditional publishing publishing? Um, indie publishing, you're doing it all yourself. Um, you're doing the, um, you're doing like finding the cover you're um you're finding editors you're doing um like you basically do what a publishing company would do for you at the public publishing company i was at like the minute i wrote the book they already were um or started writing the book they were already talking with somebody about my cover or um for the cover art um and i didn't have to do anything they had the the cover made they had the editors already set up um you know they did my brand for me my logo and all that stuff and i didn't really have to do anything and just just until it was time for it to release you know just talk about it really um you know do a, a takeover here or there but when you're doing like an indie author you're doing it yourself because uh, sometimes some art um cover artists like while they're looking, because that's what they're getting, I don't pay to do um, for right, yeah. a model or, you know, like what aspects you want on it. But sometimes they'll have you um, look for your couple that you want on the front of the book. That way you can be satisfied and then they do the rest. And um, so, and I guess with a publishing company is, um my books did better because again, I had a name behind it. Um, well, she's also an indie author with her like own LLC, but I had a name behind it. So it was like, you know, and they did like all the advertising and I just had to do my own stuff. Like if I wanted to push it more than I shared it, whatever. Um, but I didn't even have to spend anything because it was all, through the publishing company and then whatever I got in my monthly sales that just like so much of that went back to pay for all that. So, but now it comes out of pocket. Do you think so. it's any easier or harder? Um, I, w- I would say like the actual writing's easy. And especially like 10,000 words, everybody's like, that's a lot of words. And I'm like, yeah, but to somebody who's done it, I mean, I, okay, I say it's easy. It's not. Um, I would say it's harder to be an indie author sometimes in this world, unless you have like a huge following where like, you know, everything comes easy and you can get like mm-hmm. the big expensive cover model, um, whatever it's, it's hard. I would say it's hard. And I literally have wanted to quit several times and just be a reader because um, I get so down on myself. Like, um, 
like I want to know from readers, like when they read my books, like, and they don't leave a review, why they didn't leave a review or what they liked about it, what they didn't like about it kind of thing. I would love that feedback. Um, but I think it, even traditional, like going through a publishing company is hard because again, some of the decisions are taken out of your hand. Um, like on the cover and things like that. Not that they didn't like say, like, how about this? And like, ask my opinion. But for the most part, it was like already decided. Yeah. yeah. I feel like being an author in general is hard because you have to subjugate yourself to um, other people's opinions, which is pretty common nowadays because we're all on social media. So it happens regardless. But I feel like you guys more so because you're creating something um, from inside your mind. And it's just one of those. It, um, it's like airing out pieces of your dirty laundry, essentially. Like you um, you have to put pieces of yourself and pieces of your life into this, um, or you don't have to, but that's typically how it goes. And then it ends up being like, you know, you're feeling raw and vulnerable when you go to publish because you've put it out there. Um, also, because of the whole like new woke generation, and I hate to say it like that, but... You know, I was, I, was born, I was born in the 70s, so, um, like, I've been to lots of different places. I've experienced a lot of different culture, and I never want to offend anybody. And that's another thing um, that, like, I had in my mind I wanted to do um, a, a book set in South Korea. Um, where she's white and he was South Korean because I've been to Seoul. I was stationed in um, Osan. Um, but I also don't want people to be like, well, that she's white and she's writing about South Korean culture, you know. I, um, so I kind of put that like on the back burner because, again, um, I'm about to get bombarded. It's a neighbor dog. He likes to come over all the time. He loves me. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't. Um, so you don't want to offend anybody. Yeah. I feel like there's this really fine line of like um, doing enough research to be respective and be able to, t or respectable, like respectful in your writing um and wanting to get your story told and then um someone taking it the wrong way which i mean in, you're not you're not wrong with like you said the new rope generation it is one of those like every little bitty thing if you're not so very careful about how you phrase something or how the description around it is people get really offended easily um it has so much to do with the – I feel like it's partially, like, um, somewhat some inattentive parents just being like, you do what you want, you know, um, because – I, as a kid, I mean, I'm not technically a millennial, um, but I'm not quite – Gen Z, neither. I was born in that weird in between where my parents were born in the 80s, but I was born in 2000. But my mom and my dad were 17 and 19. So I pretty much grew up with them. And it was like, you know, their older siblings are 80s kids. And um, it was, you know, you've got to have. You can't wear your heart on your sleeve. You've got to have thick skin. You can't let things get to you. You've got to be tough. You know, you, you've you got to be hard as nails. You've got to really drive for what you want. You know, good things do not come easily. You have to work for them and all of that. And I'm like, I don't have the same work ethic that a lot of people my age, you know, have. A lot of people my age want everything to come kind of easily to them. And me, I'm like, no, I want to work for it. The satisfaction behind earning that kind of thing. Um, and I feel like it makes me not quite as sensitive neither. Like there are a lot of things that I'm like, are you sure that that's really how you want to? Like, it's not that big of a deal. Um, on, like on top of that, anybody's going to find anything to, um, to, 
tear apart a book. Um, oh, yeah. If it sounds yeah. too much like another story or somebody already did this, um, almost kind of like, uh, I don't, you probably don't remember Cocky Gate. Um, mm -hmm. This lady tried to um, trademark the word cock, cocky. C O C K. I can't say that. I mean, I don't know if I can say that. Um, and say, and then she went after authors that had it in their title. Um, of course, it was thrown out because that word's been around since, like, you know, who knows how long? Yeah. You know, since the yeah. day of time. Um, and so, but you know, the audacity of some people, but you know, like you can't use that word or, um, or, um, if like somebody did like the seven sins and then somebody else does the seven sins, you know, like somebody gets upset because somebody else already did it. I mean, there was just another, um, I don't know. I, I somehow missed the T, but I think it was like, um, somebody used almost word for word and then changed the title of the of the other person's book which is plagiarism but it's always like um but let's just say i love um forsyth university by samantha rue and angel lawson and if i decided i wanted to do say like something not like that but like use like the seven sins or whatever as like you know the frat houses somebody probably would say i was stealing from them and you know yeah. which i'm i would never do because i like i love those authors like i love that series um but i also feel no matter what even if you come up with an original idea somebody always is going to find something wrong with it like men are violent because you're using mma fighters or um you know cowboys are violent because they you know use spurs on horses or whatever you know somebody always finds something wrong with yeah. whatever you're writing it's just a part of life and like you said like your parents said you have to have thick skin um does it hurt i've read some of my reviews and they tell you don't read your reviews and i you know <laughs> i've read some and it, it stings word i mean uh they say like uh words can't hurt but they can um and then sometimes you just have to let it roll off your back yeah that is one of the biggest things that i think my parents told me regularly is like the sticks and stones may break my bones but words can never hurt me and i had to go back and i was talking to my mom a couple years ago and i was like you know that saying was great as a kid because it taught you that someone else's opinion should not matter to you but at the same time that statement is very true because it is so easy for someone that you hold in a high regard or, you know, someone that you gave something of yours to put you down so easily and that and it affects your mental health. Like this is something that was not addressed as much when you were young. And I understand that, but like, that is a very big thing. Like that's why, you know, you have issues and I have issues and my siblings have issues and like, it's it's also not just that um i will always be somebody's biggest supporter um if you're a baby author um you know and all of a sudden you know i'm going to support you and if you get huge great for you at the same time it sucks when you see like somebody you've supported before they're writing you know all of a sudden like have like this huge release day and everybody's like raving about their books. I'm, and I mean, that's petty. And I, you know, and I know I shouldn't feel that way. I'm, and, and no matter how happy I am for them, I just feel like at the same time, I'm like, um, and it might be just the person that's her PA or, and my PA is great and I love her, but you know, it's, I don't know if I have just haven't found like that one book that's just going to be like the one to take off. Um, so, I mean, again, I tear apart my own books, but, um, but I think it's just like the whole generation, like everybody loves something different. 
But at the mm-hmm. same time, everybody hates everything different. Yeah. I don't, I don't think you can really like. win. It makes so much sense because, like, everybody wants to, um, like, we want to have that that model house with the granite countertops and the big bay windows or whatever it is with all the lighting and, you know, the couple acres, but we don't want it to look like someone else's. Like we want it, but we don't want it to be the same shade of blue or the same green or, or whatever. Like we want to have that style, but we don't necessarily want it like to be the exact same as someone else's. And it's the whole thing of like, we yearn to have what other people have accomplished, um, but we want to make it our own. But the flip side of that is the younger generation wants to be just given it. And that's part of it too. Um, it, mm. And so whenever you're looking at it as it comes into like social media and it comes to marketing and the book world, um, there's a lot of like, not necessarily gatekeeping, but also it's like there is this stigma of I'm I don't mind giving you a little bit of information, but at the same time, like I'm not gonna tell you all of my secrets because you're gonna try to, you know, still the people who like my reading or what you know, my writing, and all my readers are gonna stop reading my stuff to read yours or and I'm like, there are enough of us to go around because a lot of us will read multiple authors that write the same gener- you know, genres and style books. Like, you know, if you write your version of the seven deadly sins and Anna Wang just wrote her version of the seven deadly sins, and you know, I think it was Katie Robert or someone like that, another dark a- author they wrote their version of the seven deadly sins. And it was like, I'm going to read all of them. I'm probably going to love all of them. Well, it's like, um, cause I, I was talking to my PA cause again, I get so down on myself and she's like, yeah. you know, these are the genres that are big. You just have to find like, like the, the dark romance has a lot of readers you just have oh to find God. like this one story that just takes off because you know you feel like it's been done before you feel like um you know like i mean and like mc novels like i'm a huge mc i love motorcycle romance and yes. um and it's just like you can you can do mc but you don't also want it to sound like this already happened or like the the billionaire dark romance has already happened but like my PA once said she's like but it hasn't been written by you you know um you just have to find like a different way like um I joined a shared world um with like Annalise Reynolds and I think Sapphire Knight's in it and um I don't know if I can, I can't say the series yet. I don't know if I can say the series yet. It's going to release next year, but it's basically football. And, um, and again, like also that's not a genre I've done before. I've done sports like hockey and, um, and MMA, but, um, you know, like I am my, the first part of it is, um, I got an idea from Reddit because I listen to like Reddit stories on TikTok and it's going to be my first MM novel. But again, I don't, I'm sure it's been done, but like my PA said, it hasn't been done by me. Um, Mm -hmm. So we're going to see how that goes. Um, It's kind of like a by awakening, I guess is how they call it. Um, Because one of the guys is straight. Um, So we'll see how that goes. (laughs) But um, listening a by a by awakening story or sapphic novel or whatever you want to call it they they are my cup of tea okay <laughs> like I am here for it all and I read a lot of things I think I've read a couple I don't know which ones I don't remember which ones they're probably dying on my Kindle somewhere but I'm pretty sure I've read a couple of your books I just don't remember which ones Okay. I have like fifteen books by now. Um, 
Like I said, uh, I just released Dear John, which is the military uh, romance. Um, and then I'm working on this football book um, out of, and I've, a lot of my books are probably now going to be, I live in Texas. Um, I moved here for a job. It didn't work out, but I also work for Target. Um, everybody get out there. It's circle week. Um, it Today's the last day, so go out. Um, but, uh, um, but a lot of my books... Uh, do have Vegas in them or they, I mentioned Las Vegas because that's where I call home. That's where my dad still lives. Um, so sorry for the people living there. It's been record highs, 120 all week. So, um, I don't miss that. Um, but I think it's a lot of people right where they feel they're comfortable. Um, which is another way, like they also put like a lot of themselves into their, into their books again. <clears throat> but I uh um so but there's I I also feel like as an author like I want to step out of my comfort zone every once in a while just because um it, one it keeps people on their toes and two it it you can find you can maybe find like something you're really good at. Like this is your, this is your genre. This is your jam. Let's do this. Um, yeah. But, but um, I don't, yeah, I think I don't like, those are the only things like I have upcoming, but most of the things other than the HP Lovecraft stuff will take place in Vegas. All right. I think that's all I've got. I had a pleasure talking to you and I got to see your cat. Hello. Um, he we just lost our buddy back on uh Easter Sunday. So um he's become very clingy, but I get it. We're both grieving. But yeah, he but but even before that, anytime I get on the phone, he wants to be on the phone. So <laughs> just to be like right there. Yes. Well, thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me. Of course, of course. And I will be most likely catching up on your backlog. Um, and I'll make sure that everyone has um, all of your social media information. Oh, wow. Social media wow. information. So that we can all find you and um, start reading through your luck as well. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Okay.